Thank you. So I'd like you to take a moment with me and remember a time, a time when perhaps you've had words or actions that have hurt another person. And when you think about this time, it might be a long time ago, or it might have been just a few days ago. But allow yourself to be present to this time that comes to you now. You know, every one of us, every one of us makes mistakes And every one of us crosses over the line sometimes. But there is nothing sweeter. There is nothing more healing than a day that is filled with forgiveness. And so this is what we're going to talk about today. This is the fifth key to the kingdom from David Owen Ritz's great work on Abundant Living. If you remember, last week we began by making room for the new and we cleared out spaces in our head and in our homes. Oh my gosh, you should see my basement. I've got new piles of stuff, but piles of stuff to give to my daughter, piles of stuff to give to the church for the rummage sale coming up, and then piles of trash. And that's really good. I'm really glad because I'm cleaning out spaces to create a new space to receive God's good in my home as well as in my head. And today, with forgiveness, I'm looking to take us all on a journey so we create a space in our heart. Forgiveness is all about the heart. It's all about removing what was in the past that sticks you know, that part of us that, that holds grudges, that part of us that holds resentments and hurts, that part of us that we torture ourselves with. Do you know what I mean? There's that little place inside that just doesn't forgive ourselves. And sometimes out of stubbornness or perhaps, perhaps out of fear, It's that same part of us that doesn't ask for forgiveness from another. So today, let's talk about forgiveness in these ways. And let's know that as we do, we will open up spaces to receive God's good, God's love, and God's abundance even more fully. I'm reminded of the words by David Owen Ritz when he says this. He says, you cannot hold on to energy from the past and at the same time grasp and embrace the highest possibility of your future vision without forgiveness. The power of forgiveness is immense. It helps us and it assists us in the ability to release that which does not serve our good or the good of others. It opens the door to letting go of that heaviness that keeps us from living with joy and living from knowing God more. And here's another thing. When we forgive, we find a way to live freely where the past becomes just that. It becomes the past, a place where we learned, a place where we grew, a place where we found our heart. And the vacuum that Alyssa was talking about, that space that the universe will then create and put new things in, that space gets filled with love, with light, with peace and joy. And that is worth having. And so I was thinking about how do I open up to forgiving? How do I open up to asking others for forgiveness? How do I open to forgiving myself? I mean, it was really just the other day in the tiniest of moments, as well as those big ones, where we are called to develop a living practice of forgiveness. So there I was a couple days ago. Well, actually, it was probably about a month ago now. And I was getting ready. I was putting my makeup on. And I grabbed my little tube. 
this tube to be exact, and I thought it was lipstick. Well, I put it all over my lips, and I noticed after doing this, because I like red, after I was doing this for about three, four days, I noticed that my lips got all chapped, and they were feeling funny and tingly. And so the fourth day, I picked it up, and I saw that it said, Diamond Dazzle Stick. Jewelry Cleaner for Silver. <laughs> well, clearly it was not this. Well, I had a few not-so-kind words for myself, if you can imagine. Like, what an idiot. That was one of the words. And there were other things just like that that came to my mind. <laughs> then there was really, this happened just the other day, Lonnie and I were talking about a friend that we are concerned about whose behavior perhaps hasn't been of the highest caliber. And so I said, most thoughtfully, now keep that in mind, most thoughtfully, and from the heart, also keep that in mind, and I said, I really think he needs to ask for, ooh, I think that he needs to make some apologies. And I thought that was a kind thing to say. Well, if you would have seen Lonnie's face, and then he picked himself up and went directly out of the room, and I was sitting there thinking, did I say something? Did I do something? And what I realized in that moment of being willing to look at my behavior is I realized that even though I thought what I said was kind and I thought it was thoughtful, it clearly was not what he wanted to hear. And it hurt him. It hurt his feelings. It hurt his idea of how he holds someone in his heart. And I thought to myself, yeah, I really didn't need to say that. I really want to be more sensitive. And I found a way to apologize and to ask, if I hurt you with my words, I am sorry. You see, forgiveness isn't always about those great big things that we've done or those great big things that have happened. Forgiveness is also about the smallest moments. It's about the times when we intentionally and unintentionally create harm for another person. It's about those times when we create pain, and that pain hurts us because it hurts another person. Now here's the good news. As we begin this forgiveness practice, let us know that we are not alone. We are not the only ones, all of us sitting here. We are not the only ones that have ever said or done anything that requires a little forgiveness. How do I know this? Because there are a lot of songs out there about just this. For example, I think about the song from Elton John. Sorry seems to be the hardest word, right? Yeah. And then what about Adele and her song, Hello? That's a song about regret and seeking some forgiveness. And then there's this really sweet song by Evanescence, and it's called Forgiveness. And then, of course, there's this old-time favorite by Chicago. Hard to say I'm sorry, right? You see, forgiveness is a theme for all of us because not only are we human beings, but we're spiritual beings, and it is the power of being a spiritual being that allows us to forgive in a great way, in a clean way. As human beings, when we get stuck in the things that we've done or the things that we have said or created harm, we oftentimes drench ourselves in guilt and shame and remorse. But when we activate the spiritual nature within our being, 
We see those things. And we feel them with love, with wisdom, and compassion. And so today, let us open up to the journey of asking for forgiveness. And let us open to the journey of forgiving ourselves. Because we all make some big mistakes sometimes. And we all step across that line. But nothing sweeter than the day we find, we find. It's hanging over him like the clouds of Seattle Raining on his swag, falling deep in the saddle You can see it on his face, he don't need to make a sound Call the spy, oh, we got a man down I want to share with you a somewhat unusual story about forgiveness that comes from the Gospel of John today. It is a story that is typically told about judging others, but as we apply it to ourselves today and as we look at the willingness to forgive ourselves, let us hear it with new ears. Early in the morning, Jesus came down again to the temple. And all the people came to him, and he sat down, and he began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And he made her, and he made, and they made her stand before him. And they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that he might have to charge her with something. But Jesus bent down 
and he wrote with his finger on the ground. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then once again he bent down and he wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And then he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And from now on, sin no more. When we imagine ourselves to be the woman, we see within ourselves a new way of being. For each of us has made errors in our thinking, in our doing. And sometimes those errors bring upon us dishonor or humiliation, sorrow or shame. And then we can also see within us, there's another part of us that is also like the scribes and like the Pharisees, and that is the judging mind, the mind that is out to cast blame and to want to punish And in this case, punish ourselves for being unconscious in what we say or do. And then we look to Jesus who took his time and wrote on the ground and we recognize that he symbolizes the Christ spirit within. And in a moment when we know logically and we know clearly what the law calls for, We know that sometimes we are meant to go deeper than that. And so writing, clearing a space, taking time to turn within, allowed the Christ spirit to come forward in Jesus. And instead of judging the woman, he asked each person there to look at themselves. He called on each person there to recognize themselves in her. Not in an, I'm better than you, or my stuff wasn't as hard as your stuff. But in an honest way, can we not, like the scribes and Pharisees, can we not see ourselves in another human being who has fallen off the track? Can we not find a way to recognize that all of us as human beings sometimes miss that mark and we fall astray with our words or with our actions? And so one at a time, they walked away recognizing They could not throw stones at someone who was as human as they were. And as Jesus continued to go deeper and deeper inside, not looking out here, not paying attention to what was going on out here, but going deeper inside, finally he spoke to the woman and he said, What happened? Where are they? Where are they? Is anyone going to condemn you? And he saw that there was no place for that to happen. And he said, I will not condemn you either. Go forward in a new way. Leave behind the ways from the past. Let it go. Leave it and go forward in a new way. Now, I think that this is a wonderful story that applies to all of us. It applies to whatever we harbor within ourselves when we are like the woman in our lives in a big or little way. 
when that judging mind wants to come and criticize and condemn and hold on to the things that have happened. But you know, we are more than human. We are more than that judging mind. The Christ spirit lives in us as well. And so we are called to go within and come forward in a new way and to remember the truth of who and what we are. We are more than any error we have ever made. We are more than any error we have ever made. From 2 Corinthians, it is sad. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. That is what we are called to do. We are called to leave the old things alone, to do what is required, to clear the way, to open the door, to heal, to forgive. And in that process, we create that opening, and we are made new. So I want to share with you the four steps that David Owen Ritz talks about in this particular key. He says that these four keys, um, these four steps rather, will open the door to forgiveness. And I want us to apply them to ourselves in our forgiveness work. The first step, discovery. When we are willing to look at the places where we have made errors, when we are willing to own our behavior and our thoughts, when we take responsibility for what we've done, we open the door to discover the places that call for healing. It takes courage to be willing to look. I've met people that say their forgiveness work is all done and they have nothing to forgive. Have you ever met people like that? So it takes courage to look more deeply. It takes courage to not just brush things aside because we don't have the willingness to look at what has happened or we don't have the humility to own our own errors. So we begin with discovery. And then the next step is about making a decision. When we make a decision to forgive, what happens is we commit. We commit to letting go of that which does not serve in our hearts. We let go of that thing we did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yesterday. We don't repeat it like a bad record over and over and over Sometimes we have this old conditioning that says we have to punish ourselves because we've made a mistake. But a more enlightened way to look at that is to say, I commit to doing what is needed to open the door for forgiveness, but I will not punish myself because it serves no one and no thing any good. And so we make that decision to let it go, and in letting go, we also do our part. We make amends. We reach out. We apologize. We say, I'm sorry if my words hurt you. Did they hurt you? We say, I made a mistake. And so we do our part to make amends. And we pray for peace. Now the third step is very interesting. It is about thinking differently. 
So when we think differently, what that means is we get out of the rut of our usual thinking. You know, when you think about that thing that bothers you, you have your way of thinking about it. Like, man, I really messed up. I'm such a loser. Or what I say is, what an idiot. That's what I say in the past, in the past. <laughs> But we, we get out of the rut of judging ourselves or judging a situation in the way that holds us hostage. And we allow ourselves the ability to think differently. Perhaps we open up to a grander perspective and we see it with new eyes and with fresh eyes and with an open heart. We don't necessarily say we did the best we could at the time because we don't always do that, do we? Sometimes we simply know better and we don't do better. But we embrace whatever we have said or done with an open heart. And we find a way to think differently. And in that way, we find compassion. We find wisdom we find peace. Here's another thing about thinking differently. We also think differently about the situation. And we think different about the person or the situation that has happened so much more that it allows new understanding or new wisdom to come forward. We give up needing to be right or thinking our way is the only way. And we allow God's presence within us to seek a new home within our hearts. The fourth step, after we've made our amends, after we've prayed, after we've thought differently, as we've opened up, now we make a decision to move on in wisdom and in peace. We release the outcome of whatever has happened with a commitment to do better. Sometimes we say or do things, and because we haven't thoroughly looked at it, we repeat that cycle again and again. But when we make a commitment to do better and to be better, that old conditioning no longer has its hold on us. It will not find a place in our consciousness in the same way. And we also recognize that as we ask for forgiveness for that which we've done, we realize that sometimes we will not receive it back that the person or the situation that we've asked for forgiveness from may or may not bring to us the outcome we desired. But that is not the purpose. We ask for forgiveness. We speak to what we have done, and we do it out of love, out of wisdom, and out of peace. And then we let it go. It is pretty powerful to forgive in this way because when we do, we find that our, our forgiveness has no strings attached. I'll forgive myself as long as you forgive me. Or I'll forgive myself as long as you do what I want you to do. Have you ever been there? Right? You know what I'm talking about. But we forgive and we ask for forgiveness and we set ourselves free. We create a space where the past no longer binds us. And here's the good stuff. We receive our good. We receive the wisdom. We receive the knowledge. We receive the love that had been withheld from us when we were stuck in our old pattern. And when we forgive in this way, and when we receive the good, the growth from the practice, the spiritual practice of forgiveness, we are free and open to receive God's good. That is worth having. And that is why we forgive. We forgive to really be open to being the beloved of God, fully deserving, 
fully receptive to the abundance that is truly ours. It is indeed God's great pleasure to give us the kingdom of good, and it is up to us to create the space to receive it. So let's take a moment now 